Welcome to the Northern Affinity Video Podcast. During this session, we will be having an unedited discussion with an expert. And what I'll be planning to do is during our discussion, get them to teach me something. Teach me about something that's of interest, but also they are an expert in. I'm Michael Edwards and I'm the founder of the Northern Affinity. And I will tap into our wonderful community to bring you along on my drive for self-improvement and my desire to learn. So please connect with me on on various social media platforms, whether it's LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter. And I'd love to hear from you what what subjects you'd like to learn more about, what subjects you think it'd be good for me to learn about. So please, you know, get in contact and let me know. All the details will be in the show notes and you can send me an email or contact me by by the various platforms. I really hope you enjoy the show. So welcome everyone to the latest edition of the Northern Affinity podcast. Um, I'm delighted to say we're joined by David this week and we're going to talk about all about HR and, and HR specifically within kind of an SME environment. So um, before I start firing a lot of questions your way, David, and, and picking your brains, do you want to quickly kind of introduce you and, and your business and then we'll kind of, we'll go from there. Hi, I'm Michael. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm David Marshall. I... I'm the owner of a small HR consultancy based on the Wirral Peninsula. If you've never visited, it's well worth a visit. It's beautiful. Um, I've been in HR for a very long time and it's my passion, really. I took, I was a postman and I got an opportunity to move from being a postie into an admin role in in Royal Mail and that admin role was HR based and so my career grew really thanks to um thanks to a trade union rep believe it or not who said that you'd be good in personnel so I I studied I became a chartered fellow of the Institute of Personality Development I then did a Master of Arts degree in learning and development at Liverpool John Moores and after a period of time i thought you know what i need to move out into the big wide world so i've I've had various jobs over my career and in january of this year i decided that i'd take the bold daft jump into being my, my standalone consultant and people often say to me a number of things one is why care HR and why is the tartan on your business cards? Well, that's easy. I'm half Scottish. My, my grandparents were proud Scots and my dad was David Keir. And my dad was one of only four people I've ever looked up to in my life. Um, the other one is my big daft brother. Um, and I love him to bits, but my dad, was genuinely an inspiration. And he used to say to me, the only person who'll stop you getting to where you want to be in life is yourself. So, okay, thanks dad. (laughs) So when I was kicking ideas around for the business name, I I think my wife said to me, what about your dad's name? And it just fitted, it fitted perfectly. So um, we adopted Keir HR as our business name. We've got a a Scottish oak tree on the back of our cards. So yeah, very proud of that. That's, that's great. And that's a great story of kind of how you got to that. So it's, um, I think that, I think that suits everything what you're about really. I think, um, yeah. So I, I guess kind of framing this conversation a little bit, I get, some people have different knowledges of, I suppose, what HR is and, and what someone like yourself does. So really, really simple question to start with. Is what does a HR advisor do? And, and I know that you could go for a long time on that, but uh, in, a general, in general speaking. I think the, the, the shortest, simplest answer is my role as your um, outsourced HR consultant is really to guide you through employing people to help you develop your business culture so you know one of my my like clients said to me i don't need hr dave 
you're just a cost. And I said, yeah, I agree with you. In principle, broadly speaking, yeah, spot on. However, are your contracts compliant? I don't know. Okay. Have you exited anybody from your business? Oh, yeah, yeah. Just before Christmas, we sacked someone. But it's okay. Didn't have two years service. Uh, okay. Did they have a protected characteristic? Sorry? Say that again? Immediately. I think, oh, God. Right. Okay. Let's start from the beginning. So it's about making sure your contracts are compliant, your policies and procedures are in place. Simple things, you know, re to me, the, the, this really simple thing like, um, do you have an attendance recording system? Now, there's a, there's a great employment tribunal case recently where a barber dismissed somebody and he dismissed this lady because she had a, an, what he called an appalling sick record, but there was no evidence of it. And it's almost put this guy out of business. Mm. And to me, simple Excel tick sheet, you know, somebody's in, they're not in. And then there's a record. So over a period of time, you can then say to somebody, look, you're taking every Monday off or every Friday or every Wednesday. There's a pattern. It, it's really simple, you know, and I suppose when you've been in human resources, as long as I have, then you think that's easy. But if you're an SME and you've had this, you know, great idea to start a business um, with your mate, you know, you both like beer, so you, you open a microbrewery and your microbrewery grows. How do you, how on earth? Would you know about people management? Well, pick up the phone, you know, talk to somebody like me that can give you that advice and guidance. It's not expensive, gen you know, generally. And it can save an awful lot of money. You know, I think the, the, the case I spoke about before cost this chap best part of £4,000. He, he was complaining, you know, I think, well, you could have saved that really easily, you know. So overall, that that's what HR can do. And one of the things I I like to do with with clients is when they ask me for a new policy, new procedure, um, is talk them through it, take them through. Might only be an hour, you know, an hour of my time to talk them through the, the new policy, how it works, how it can be used. Um, and how it can save them, you know, go back to my, my days uh, in Royal Mail and I was a training manager and I was the person who trained managers in dismissal. And I used to say to them at the beginning of every session, by the time you leave, I will have given you a superpower and that superpower can end a marriage cost somebody their home or sometimes cost them their life and the look of horror that came on but that's what dismissing someone can do mm. so you have to get that bit absolutely right you, you know and, and that's important so you know a client might say to me can you train my managers to dismiss I go yeah of course I can but I'll caveat the training with be careful you know, taking somebody's job away from them is, is massive. And it shouldn't be done just because, you know, like the, the client of mine, said, oh, yeah, we dismissed someone at Christmas because we didn't like him. No. <laughs> yeah, you might not like somebody, but are they doing a decent job? If they're doing a decent job, then performance manage them. There are other options. You have to think it all through carefully. You know, so... Yeah, and I think I think you know it's one thing I I often talk to people about kind of my experiences of running my own business. It's one of the things I always say to people is let the experts be the experts. Yeah. Um, I think when you run your own business, kind of the I guess part of the deal is you have to have 
some knowledge in almost every area. And that's quite mm. difficult. You have to have enough knowledge to understand it and to be able to have a discussion with someone in HR, someone in finance, someone in marketing and, and so on and so forth. But you don't have to be the doer necessarily. Um, you might have to do certain things at the start, but I think when it comes to, it's a bit like your accountancy, you know, you're, you're a limited company. There's all sorts of boxes you need to tick for yeah. um, tax and other purposes, not the kind of thing you want to get wrong because that can end badly. And to me, it feels like, you know, HR is similar in that way from a from a compliance point of view. And yeah, I think there's more to HR actually, and they use the word culture early, and I'll come to that in a minute. But I think let the expert be the expert is is so important. And it is important. You know, one of the, the, the best entrepreneurs that I, I know, and I worked with the, the guys for 12 years, are uh, Danny and Mark Schweiger of Character World in, in Cheadle. And Danny's brilliant. Danny's your classic entrepreneur. He has this crazy idea, goes away, and he knows he can't do it. So he'll hire people who can you know, and he said to me, I haven't got a clue what you do. I have got no idea how you built the culture that is in this business, but it's down to you, you know. And he, he then says, I'm, I'm great at going out. I just wish I had Danny's networking ability. You know, the guy gets on a train and by the time he gets off in London, he knows half the train. <laughs> you know, you think, I'd love to do that. Oh, absolutely. You know, where he surrounds himself, excuse me, with people who are skilled. So you're right. If, you know, I'm not an accountant, my son is, God bless him. You know, my son says to me, you can't do that, Dad. Can't I? Why? Because it's not your money. Yeah. And equally, I'll say to him, you can't do that. Huh? Yeah. Well, it's, it's against you know, legislation and you go, oh, didn't know that. You know what you know, uh, and you play to your strengths, don't you? A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely in business. And and this is the thing for me, you know, my, a small business doesn't need to be focused on, are my contract of employment correct? Are the policies there? What they need to be doing is going out, knocking on doors, finding new clients, finding new finance, um, finding new premises if they need them and then saying, okay, we need another 10 people. Dave, can you help us? You know, and that's where my strength is, is being able to help you with the people issues. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and I want to pick up on culture, as I mentioned there, because and I guess this is where it comes down to kind of talking about SMEs specifically as well is how important do you think it is in your experience that, you get that culture right from the start. Now, I know it will evolve and everything like that. Obviously, businesses do. But getting it right and having someone help you develop that when there is one employee, for example, I would imagine would be easier and you've got 100 employees and yeah. you let it build and evolve from there rather than having to turn around the oil tanker. Would that, would that make sense? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. If if, if you, go, you go back in time to my previous lives, where you, I've gone in to a, a warehouse, let's use a warehouse for, as a great example, um, and you've got a great culture. You think, okay, how can you replicate that culture in another warehouse for the same business? Well, you can't. It, it's impossible because the culture comes from, from, I always say bottom up, you know, and it's probably the wrong phrase to use, but. Your shop floor will set your culture and you can talk to your shop floor and say to them, look, you can't say these things anymore. You know, it's disrespectful. It's not treating people with dignity and respect. And we want you to stop. The minute you walk out the door, they'll carry on. You know, they'll just revert to type. But you educate and you, you change people's um, mindsets. You win their hearts and minds. You, you explain how uh, you know, something can harm people and hurt them. 
But as, as you say, if you if you got one person and then you go to ten, you got nine new people, and those nine new people will look to number one. You know, it's normally the company founder, and if they're autocratic, then that will flow through. Hmm. So, you, you know, as a as a business owner, as a business creator. You've got to stop, I think, and, and really think hard about what you want out of your business. You know, what do you want your business to look like in 10 years' time? Because if you want a, you know, a turnstile for a, a door, great. You know, and, and now there are so many social media outlets that people will just go, don't go and work there. They're horrible then you find it hard to recruit. And ultimately, if you can't recruit, your business will just go under. Mm. But if you create that positive culture that people think, I really want to go there. You know, that that has a feel about it. And, you know, in my old job in character, well, I used to say it, it's a family business. Well, it was because it was owner managed but private equity backed and that was a, a really great dynamic you know because you've got people who are looking to get a return on their investment and you've got owner managers but the owner managers were two brothers and you can't have a family feel really when you've got that external finance pressure so you work really hard to make sure that people can have open and honest conversations. They can come to you and go, I'm not happy. And this is why I'm not happy. And then you can say, well, okay, how can we make that better? Can we allow you to do different hours or whatever it may be? And because you've got that open dialogue, things will change and it might take time it, you know things don't just change quickly as you say it's, it's like turning a super tanker and eventually bit by bit by bit people will go this is all right this yeah you know I, and i'm always honest with people when i recruit so look you'll have six months where you wonder what the heck's going on you scratch your head i think this is a mistake I did, you know, and I, I, you know, I'm going through it now. You know, I'm in what I'm in month three of my own business. I'm going, have I done the right thing? <laughs> yes, I have. You know, I, I know I have because there's so much to offer, so much to offer people. And when people join an, a new business, it's about walking with them for, for, you know, maybe three months, maybe six months talking to them, walking past them, tapping them on the shoulder, saying, how's things? You okay? And you get the look of, or, yeah, it's fine. You sure? Yeah, honestly. And when people have that panic attack, come on, let's go have a cup of tea. Let's go for a walk. You know, just, just go and have a wander. And people will look up at the sky and go, I'm really struggling, Dave. I, I, I think this is a mistake. I mean, you, you can talk to them and say, why do you think it's a mistake? What do you think your mistake was? Well, you know, this is just mad. It's crazy. No, it's not. I felt like that for six months. You know, I thought, I, I've never worked in textiles. I've never worked with a licensed business. But suddenly it clicks and you think, it's okay this i enjoy it but it's it's having that open dialogue you, you can't just assume that because somebody starts on day one in six months time that they're going to be okay you know you, you have to handhold um, touch base cups of tea you know all those things that keep the dialogue going Absolutely. And w one thing I often hear from a lot of people in business, um, uh, sometimes it's HR related, but just in general is I'm not big enough for X. So it might be, I'm not big enough to have someone 
look after my HR. I'm not big enough for someone to look after my marketing. Again, my finance, all yeah. those kind of areas of business we all know. And I think one of the things that not everyone is aware of yet is the big change that I think has probably happened over the last five, 10 years of almost, I guess it's the outsourcing idea. It's almost on-demand help. For, for different things, you know, a few years ago, if you needed someone, you had someone to look after your HR, you would essentially have to hire an HR manager. If you look someone, you look at your marketing, exactly the same. Whereas it's changed now, hasn't it? And as a, you know, what you do is, is very different. So you can kind of explain how that can work for an SME, someone who's maybe taken on the first employer, or maybe two or three employees that doesn't need someone to full time, but needs that, needs some support. Yeah, I mean, I- that, that's you know a brilliant example of how the world sort of moved on. You know, I, I remember when I was doing my professional qualifications, you know, Charles Handy was was the thing at the time, and it was people will have three or four jobs, and I used to think, you're mad. What do you mean three or four jobs? I, I, you know, a, a consultant, a consultant marketeer, consultant CFO, consultant HRD. We, we might have four, five, six different clients or bigger, you know, and it's important that, as you said previously, people won't be experts in employing people. But to know that you can pick up a phone, you know, you can contact me and say, Dave, it's not working out with this, this person and I want to exit them from the business. How can I do it? And then you talk through the, you know, there's only five fair reasons for dismissal. So you go through them and, and talk openly and honestly. It's okay, how can we achieve that? And it's the same when, um, you know, you, you, somebody isn't performing. You know, you recruit someone, you probably won't train them. You know, you, you might give them a couple of hours and go, there you go, you can do that now. Well, then you go backwards and you think uh, their performance isn't very good. Well, why? You know, were they the wrong fit for the business? Well, not really, no. Right, so it's just a performance issue. How can we fix the performance issue? What do we need to do to get that person up to speed so that you're not going to waste your recruitment fee. You're not going to waste your induction time, your onboarding time. And you're not going to go potentially having an employment tribunal because that person has a protected characteristic under the Equality Act. So it's a simple phone call. Yeah, and, and I was going to ask that question, actually, we kind of have... Well, the last question I was going to ask you about such of the consequences of things going wrong or what can go wrong. And, you know, obviously you've mentioned a few times there, like tribunals and things like that. What what could that lead? And again, obviously every circumstance is different and we all know that, but what can that lead to for businesses and the issues that, that it can bring? I, I always think not only it, employment tribunal is a financial cost and reputational damage. I nearly said almost certainly forget the financial cost because it, it, it just goes on the accounts as a you know an exceptional payment. The reputational damage you actually can't get rid of. You can't hide it. People talk, and I said previously, especially now, you know, people go on Facebook. You know, I, I, I'm on Facebook. And some of the things I see, it's, you know, I hate this guy. I'm real angry, you know, keyboard warrior. So anger leads to negativity. And for, you know, for all the right reasons, if somebody leaves and they feel aggrieved. So you can end up at tribunal. You can end up with a lot of reputational damage that then has, you know, don't go there. You know, oh, my my cousin Sally worked there, and she had she treated really badly. Oh, flipping out! I'm not going to go there, even if it was, you know, minimal. 
and Sally was 99.9% contributory, it's still reputational damage, you know. So there's always the risk of, a, of an employment tribunal. There's always reputational damage. And it becomes hard then to recruit. Yeah, and on that point, actually, and if you don't mind me asking another question, I guess from your experience, you've been in the HR world a long time, you said now that, do you think that maybe over the, the last few years that that has become more important for people that maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, it was basically how much am I going to get paid and how many holidays do I get? And that was what really, really mattered. But now, you know, we use the word culture earlier or happiness, you know, however you want to define it and whether you think it's better or worse either way, as that's up to each individual. But do you think that's been a big, big shift over the last few years? I genuinely think that lockdown has had such a huge impact on culture. You know, people now, if, if you said it's five days in, in an office, people will just go, no. You know, they, they might want three and two. They might want four and one, you know. It, it, but knowing that they have that ability to work from home or to work flexibly in terms of hours so you know somebody one of my um, former colleagues will, will happily start work at five in the morning do three hours sort out their family log back on and finish a bit earlier the work gets done you know and that's changed massively. People also want to know that their, their well-being is being looked after, you know, so that they're not going to feel stressed. They're not going to burn out. And, you know, I think despite pushes from um, senior people in government, it, people just go, no, I don't want to work in an office full time again. I would hate it if I'm honest. I, I'm the same. I mean, the thought of it's the commute for me that there's nothing could do me having to do that yeah. five times a week. I think, and I, you know, I've had jobs where I've had to do fairly long commutes at times, and it it just drains you and drags you down eventually. Um, it, it's no, it's bizarre because it, in a previous job I did fifteen hundred miles a week every week, and my father-in-law, God bless him, used to say to me, "You're doing too much mileage." I said, oh, "It's fine." You live on this weird adrenaline, but in my case, Starbucks and blueberry muffins, you know, you just, <laughs> not good for the weight, not good for the heart, but you just go through this churn, you do it, you do it. And then when it stops, you say, how did I do that? You know, I, I, I couldn't do what I used to do. No. And, I, you know, it's unhealthy and you make mistakes. You know, and I think it's back to well-being. You know, does your employer care enough about you to say, stop? Mm. Let's look at your workload. Let's see what we can do to help you. There, there mightn't be anything, you know, but there might be this huge, simple thing that says, you know, let's not do that anymore. Absolutely. Don't help me. No, oh, yeah, hundred percent. So, um, thank you for that, David. I mean, what what we'll do is, it, obviously, this is on going out on on YouTube and on podcast um, platforms. We'll put all your details in the notes anyway. But just to just if you could let us know if people want to find out more about about you and what you do in the business, where where's the best places to kind of go look? First one, the website www.kierkeir-hr.com. And that will get you all our contact details on there. Um, quick phone call, 07-970-436-003. Too many zeros. <laughs> and I'm also on LinkedIn. Excellent. Um, like I said, we'll put all the um, the links in so people will be able to pick them out. So that that's great, David. So I just, just finally want to say thank you. I really appreciate your time. And it's um, I think it's such an important area that, maybe it doesn't get identified right at the early stages for people and maybe it should do so hopefully this this will have helped 
fingers crossed you know it and as i say you know one of my my new clients the small business they've grown rapidly because of lockdown they thought they'd done everything right and then they got rid of someone just before christmas you think it's only a phone call you know if it's not if it's not david marshall of care hr there's plenty of good hr consultants out there that can help you know preferably pick us <laughs> Thank you very much, David. It's appreciated. Thanks, Michael. I hope you enjoyed this uh, chat today. And like me, you learned something new from our wonderful expert. Uh, so if you'd like to hear from more of our sessions, please subscribe on whatever platform that you get your podcast from to hear more. Um, and also, we'd love to meet you at some point at one of our upcoming events. We, The Northern Affinity Hall events all across the north of England. Um, and we'd love to meet new people and then uh, have guests along so please come along and check out our website or all the details in the show notes thank you very much for listening and see you next time